I wanted to talk about Electron in this video, specifically from the standpoint of somebody who's already a web developer. And the reason I wanted to do it from the standpoint of a web developer is because if you're already a web developer, then you actually have all the skills necessary to be effective with Electron. The same is not true for somebody who maybe just knows Python. They would have to learn some additional skills before they even got started with Electron, such as JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. So we'll do a few things in this video. We're going to chat a little bit about what Electron is, and then we're going to move into a short example of how to get just a really simple Electron desktop application running. And then we'll talk a little bit about some things you kind of need to know as you transition from web development to stuff in Electron. If you're brand new to Electron and have absolutely no clue what it is, Electron is basically a technology that allows you to make cross-platform desktop applications using web technologies like JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. And it achieves this by combining a few things together. It takes the rendering engine from Chromium, which is the open source project that's used in browsers like Chrome and Brave. It then takes Node.js along with full access to all the core modules of Node.js as well as anything you can install from NPM. And then finally, it combines Electron-specific APIs to control things that are specific to desktop applications, like, say, the uh, menu. And taken all together, you now have the tools to build a desktop application. Now, whether or not Electron is a good technology and whether or not you should prefer it over other alternatives is a subject of a lot of debate, and you can be the judge for yourself. But just real quick, we'll hit the high points of both people who are proponents of Electron and opponents of Electron. Like most things in technology, everything comes with trade-offs, and Electron is no different in this case. The primary argument in favor of Electron is that you can build cross-compatible desktop applications using common technologies like JavaScript, HTML, and CSS, and you can be assured that your application is going to look exactly the same across all platforms because it uses Chromium as its base, and Chromium is supported on all platforms. The primary arguments against Electron is that it's slow relative to its native counterparts and that it has a pretty big footprint in terms of memory usage and hard drive space, and all these are absolutely correct. However, Electron is an actively developed project, so I do expect that they'll address all these over time. So let's jump in and get started. Getting started with Electron is very similar to getting started with any other Node.js project. Start with a package.json file, and then set up your dependencies. The only dependency that's strictly required is Electron, but Electron Reload is a good one to have, which will automatically reload your application as you change files. And then Axios is just an HTTP client that we're using just for our example here. You don't actually need this. We will need to specify our main file, and for ours, we're calling it app.js. And then we're setting up a simple script called start, which is just electron and then dot. You can ignore this disabled GPU. This is specific to my machine. And this brings us to our first note when migrating from being a web developer to building Electron applications is that you want to prefer loading modules from NPM as opposed to loading them from a CDN. So take Axios, for instance. On a web page, you may not have actually loaded this with NPM. You might have just gone to a CDN and just grabbed a link that included the Axios global. The reason you don't want to do this in Electron applications is two reasons. The first is when you include things from a CDN, you automatically make your app required to have access to the internet. And if your application is something that could be used both online and offline, then you won't have the ability to use it offline because if somebody starts it while they're offline, it'll make a request to the CDN and obviously won't be able to connect to it. The second reason is security, and this is very important. Because Electron has full access to all the Node.js APIs, including full access to the system and everything else, you have to make sure that any scripts you load into your application are trusted. Because if you were to load in a remote script and that remote script happened to be compromised and happened to include code which, say, deleted your user's hard drive, that's absolutely something that could happen if you're not careful. Once you have this file prepped and ready to go, open your terminal, run npm install, and it will install your dependencies. Once that's done, go back to your editor and it's time to address this app.js file. The app.js file is going to be the first file that runs and it's responsible for initializing your application. A simple app.js file looks like this and we'll talk about what all these things do. One of the first events that fires once the app starts is going to be this ready event, and this is when we're going to actually create the new browser window and then open it. In here we can set a number of different options, but the few we're going to set is the width and the height and some of the web preferences. What this will do is open up a browser window that's 400 by 300 pixels. Next we're going to look at is node integration. One of the biggest things for security you can do is to disable this. What this makes it so is that the require keyword is not available globally, so you cannot require core node modules and use them by default. So the question then becomes, how do you access node modules? And this is where we turn our attention to the preload. Preload.js is going to be a script that runs right before the page loads. 
Preload.js is not affected by node integration false. That means that here we can use the function expose in main world from context bridge and we can assign require Axios to the global variable Axios. That way we can use it in other files. If you had other modules you wanted to whitelist, this is also a good place to do that. And then finally, we have to specify what file we want to actually load in the window because remember, this is kind of like a browser window. So we are going to load an index.html file or any other name. It doesn't have to be index.html. And our index.html file looks exactly like you'd expect. And from this point forward, development of your Electron application is pretty much identical to that of a web application. And for our sample example, we're just going to make a small Bitcoin price tracker. So before we go any further, let's make sure all this works good so far. So in your terminal, all you need to do is run npm start, and it will start your Electron application here. Because we're using Electron Reload, we can just leave this running, and as we update our files, it will automatically reload it. Now we have an include for a style sheet here called style.css, we'll, so we'll go ahead and make that file now. In this will just be some simple styles, and then when we save it, it'll update our application automatically. And then last but not least, we have our btc.js file, so we'll go ahead and make that now. In this file, we'll write a little bit of code, which will every two seconds make a request to coindesk.com for the current BTC price and then insert it into the price element. And as you can see on the left, as soon as we hit save, it automatically started. Now you'll notice that I didn't need to require Axios because I was able to expose it in preload.js. So it's also worth mentioning that you can write very modern JavaScript with Electron. You don't have to worry about writing modern JavaScript, which then has to be transpiled to older JavaScript. Because Electron will ship with a very modern version of Chromium, and then you can use the most modern version of Node.js out there, you're guaranteed to have the most up-to-date stuff. This means that if you don't want to have a crazy build step like you would in the browser, you don't have to. So that's really all there is to it in terms of making a really basic Electron app. Probably what you observed here is that making an Electron app is a lot like making a website, and you're absolutely correct. So just a quick summary of what we did. We started with our dependencies. We got all that set up by including Electron. We created a small script to start our Electron program. We then created our inlet file, which was designed to start the initial window and then load index.html into that. We then create that index.html file along with a style file and the script file, which is what's controlling the BTC price element. And that was really all it took to make the application. If you have any additional questions about anything that you saw in this video, please be sure to leave them below in the comments. And other than that, hope to see you in a future video. Take care.